Now that we have a pretty comprehensive list of data elements that we need to store, it's time to start organizing them into the structure we'll need to go into the database. By doing so, we're going to start building what's called a data model. The data model is a graphical representation of the elements that make up the overall database design. It's the construction blueprint that we've been working towards. The data model will help us visualize the tables, fields, and relationships that will allow the database to both store and retrieve information very efficiently. Tables represent the various types of entities that we want to keep track of in the database, and records or rows in those tables hold information about a single person, place, thing, or event. In order to discover the tables that we need to create, we need to take a close look at the field list we generated in the last chapter and start organizing them into logical groupings of entities or subjects. As you scan through the fields, you'll inevitably start seeing the subjects that they characterize. For instance, our employees are characterized by a name, home address, employee ID number, office phone, and cubicle number. The field's oil type, bottle size, weight, description, and price are all characteristics of the products that Two Trees carries. Continue grouping your fields into categories that represent all of the entities that you identified through your interviews and document reviews. These entities will eventually define the tables in the relational database. Next, we need a way to visualize the organization process. We're going to use a highly simplified version of the unified modeling language class diagrams that are used in programming. Here's a couple of key features of the diagram. First, each table or entity is represented by a rectangle. Then, fields are listed below the entity name. Entities are connected together with lines to represent the relationships that they have amongst each other. And then symbols are added to the relationship lines to denote the type of relationship involved. We'll take a closer look at relationships in the next movie. Here's what a basic table diagram will look like for our employees table. The table name is listed at the top in a separate box, and then the fields are listed below. At this stage, we're not concerned with the data or records that will appear in the table. We're simply displaying a list of the fields that will eventually make up the columns of the table. As we add more tables to the layout, we begin to build a data model for our database. Some people like to do this using a dedicated diagramming software, like Microsoft Visio. Others prefer to stick with a low-tech approach and use sticky notes or a whiteboard. I actually prefer the sticky note approach since it allows for quick revisions and it also allows a team of coworkers to work on the design at once. I simply write the table name at the top of a sticky note, add the corresponding fields from the field list below, and then I can move the note around on the table as needed. Now, many relational database management systems provide a graphical user interface that mimics this type of class diagram when setting up the database structure. In that sense, the class diagram serves a double purpose. First, it helps you organize your thoughts and visualize the data problem in a way that is easily worked out using pencil and paper. Second, a well-crafted class diagram can significantly reduce the amount of time that it takes to implement your design in the DBMS when the construction phase begins since you'll only need to merely copy over what you've already designed.